All right, let's go over crude oil. What I want to show you is the trade I talked about yesterday morning on the mic about breaking out of symmetry and looking for a setup. Let me show you how to do this. It's really a neat little way how to trade the system. I got three charts, okay? Now, we have market profile for you guys and gals to trade for confluence. But you can, you can uh, pick these markets apart, just like gold today. Gold's just been a great trader here this morning. Is you can pick this market apart with these three charts. Any, any given market. I don't care if it's futures, forex, stocks, ETFs, OEX options. It doesn't really matter. If you know how to trade these three charts, you're going to do very, very, very well. Let's go over the uh, first chart. This is called a, our trend chart. Now, I have videos on this at daytradingthefutures.com. If you want to see how to trade trend versus chop, we have several uh, videos on there for you to do. So this is our trend chart. That's going to tell us our bias if we should be taking Fibonacci retracement arrows or not. Okay? Trend chart. And that is our longest Rinko chart. That is a nine Rinko bar. The unique thing about my Rinko bar, we actually built our own server. Ninja Trader does not let you lock in Rinko bars. It won't let you uh, um, lock them up. So we actually built our own server to lock this Rinko bar up because it is fantastic. It has a built-in trend filter. With that said, you can catch some nice trends with this guy if you know what you're doing. So what we have, we have the trend chart of 9 sim. Right beside that, we have a 5 Rinko bar, smaller Rinko bar. And then right beside that, we have the smallest, which is a 3 Rinko bar. Now, these templates are automatically set up for you. If you do lease the program, we do. It's a plug-and-play system, and it works on all markets. Okay, so let's go over it real quick. Yesterday... I talked about symmetry breaking out. Look for a breakout of symmetry and then look for the market to finally break. What we were in, we were in a range market. So if we look at the middle chart, what I mean by symmetry, what I created are symmetry dots. Now, these symmetry dots are used two ways. They're used to scale contracts to look for subsequent runners. And they're also used for additional support and resistance on breakouts and support and resistance with trend. What we had yesterday, when we have a range market or flat market, we typically form a symmetrical wedge. And these symmetry dots are known to catch the low and catch the high of the market in a flat market. They'll just bounce in between them. They'll come up to them, hit it, go back down. Come down to them, hit it, go back up. Come back down, hit them. So the plan of action yesterday was I said, hey, we break either side of symmetry closing a body of the candle. That's the open versus close outside of symmetry you're going to look for an explosion to the upside. And that's what we had. We had a breakout. We actually had a long right here yes, uh, yesterday to go long right there. And we gave us a nice little push up in the market. So that's our symmetry, okay? That's our symmetry. Uh, we call them sim, sim dots. They're used for looking for breakouts when you're in a flat market. They all can be used to scale contracts if you get short or long. They're great targets to scale contracts when you are short along the market. I think it can be used for support and resistance, but mainly I like to use them if the market's flat. I knew that exact bar was a breakout yesterday. Look for the first retracement. We got a long right there. Let me show you a setup that happened just after that. When the market exploded up, I said, make sure you scale contracts. It's a flat market. It's probably going to give everything back that it just gave. And you pretty much know that in, that in a flat market, you're not in a hot, hot market. A flat market is when our trend filter is just flat as a pancake over here. It's flat. You see right here, you can see my, my MAs down here. They're just sideways. So you were in a range market. You're looking for explosion outside of it. Once you get explosion outside of it, typically it will run up and then give everything back. And that's what I was telling traders on the microphone yesterday. I was like, look for symmetry to control the tone of the market. So we had a symmetry break here, right there. Open versus close, that's the body of the candle. That's the most important part of a candle. Not the high and low. That's for novice uh, amateur traders. The wicks don't matter. That's how amateurs get stopped out. The open versus close of the candle is the most important. So the body of the candle closed right there above symmetry. We had a nice trade to the upside. Broke out of 69.10.
and got as high as 69.60. So you had a, a 50 tick move, $500 move to the upside. But what I tell everybody on the mic, look for it to give it all back in flat markets. How can you get in that? So let's say you missed this. Let's say that I was talking about waiting for symmetry to break out. And I didn't care if it broke out to the downside below here. It didn't matter to me because we're in a flat market. It could have broke below there on symmetry, but obviously it broke above, which was even nice because it broke out a high value area. So it broke out there. So th there's your first trade setup. That's the one we anticipated yesterday way before it even happened. But how about the next setup? As the market's moving up, I said make sure you can scale into symmetry or scale contracts because you got to possibly trade coming up on the market giving everything it just gave all the way back. How do you know when to get into the exact bar? I use the same approach. I like to look at my trend chart. So to the upside, my trend chart was this. To the upside right here, at I, I'm going to tell you exactly what bar to look for. I have a small MA on my trend chart right here, real small MA. Moving averages are worthless by nature to me, They're absolutely worthless. They're not great for support and resistance. They're not great for crossovers. They're just basically worthless unless you use it for trend direction. I like to use it for trend direction, though. So, so I got a small MA on my Renko bar. And what I like to do is I like to see when the market gets above this small MA. Now, when you're below, below all three of them, that's the most important part. The market should really fall apart. Or if you're above all three, this is the sweetest spot in the market. The sweetest spot in the market is going to be when you're above all three right there or if you're below all three. If you're not short along that market, you're missing the best opportunity in any given market at any given time because that's when the market's going to push its hardest. I, uh, for example, this morning, look at gold. If you're not long gold this morning and you're short gold this morning, you are absolutely wrong. You're doing everything possibly wrong as a trader and you deserve to get stopped out. You deserve the professional money to stop you out of gold and take your money. Why? Because the trend has been up ever since 2 o'clock this morning on my trend chart. It is screaming higher. Right now, screaming higher. So we use a trend chart to get our bias. And that's how we stay on the right side of the market. That's 50% of the battle. So let's see how we can get in these, tr these trends early. What I like to do is I like to look at the body of the candle. The body of the candle is the most important. So let's take this arrow down here. And we do this every day. Let's, this is the arrow right here. I mean, the body of the candle, I'm sorry, the arrow right there where 90% of the candle, the body of the candle close, said we're going back into a possible uptrend right there. Look for retracement longs. That one right there. We're below all three MAs, but we're straddling the smaller MA. And look at the body of the candle. When you get a 50% or higher candle close like the previous candle, see, see the previous one, 100% of the open versus close is below it. That is not an uptrend. 100% of the body of the candle close below it. That's not an uptrend. The uptrend started, it's going to start when 50% of the open versus close straddles my small MA. Then 90% of my trend filter right there, that tells you right there, that bar, you better be looking for retracement longs. So what happened? When I broke out of symmetry and we are in range, we're in range. Broke out of symmetry and we're in range. The market got into this trend. It got into this big trend. You know when you're in a big trend when you, obviously you're above all three MAs, but when you have separation, the open versus close from the smaller MA. Look at the body of the candle, how it's separated. You know you're in a beautiful move up. Look, look right here. Look how the body of the candle is not even touching my small MA. Not even touching it. Not even touching it. Not even touching it. It's telling you they're trying to mark the market up. Gold this morning. Look at gold. If I blow that up and I look at the open versus close relationship, if I look at the with my trend filter, look, at, look how it's not touching all morning. Not touching. You better be buying. You better be buying all morning. 2 o'clock all the way to 8.30 this morning. You better be a buyer. Better be a buyer. No shorting. Don't counter trend trade the market. That's for novice traders, amateur traders. Don't counter trend trade the tone. So once we got that established, we're good to go. So that we got the breakout up here, okay? This is our breakout yesterday. When did you I, – I told everybody that we're in a flat market, range market. When we get a breakout, it's probably going to give everything back. How do you know when to get in then if I was, and I was correct in my uh, assumption, it's going to give everything back. But how do you know that? How do you know what bar to get into? Well, let's use the same methodology. Here's my 8 MA. I need, the, I, need the, uh, I need my smaller MA with my trend filter built in, the 50% candle right there. That's the first candle set. Get ready for the 90% candle close. 
There's a 90% candle close. 90% of the open versus close, close below that. Right there's my close. Now my buy ask from that exact candle when it closes, right there, from that close of that candle all the way down, it was short bias. You should be taking only shorts from 10 o'clock all the way down into the 1015 area. Why? Because I now am straddling the smaller MA, even though I'm above these other MAs, I'm straddling it 90% candle close. I'm now looking for shorts. I want to roll over to my symmetry dots then. I know that I got a 90% candle close. So that 90% candle close happened at right here. It happened at 69.28. At 69.28, back, let me get the exact number for you. The close of that exact bar was 69.28, right here. That's the close of the bar, 69.28. Now, look how cool this is. This happens every day in all markets. You learn this setup, you're going to do very, very well. 69.28. There's my close, 69.28. My trend filter is now down. Let's go put 69.28 over here on the 5 and 3 cent. 69.28 is here. Knowledge is power in the markets, guys and gals. He said it's repeat. You're going to see thousands and thousands of trades like this. It happen every day in the market. There's 69.28 there, too. So we got 69.28, it closes, 90% candle close below. That's beautiful when it does this. It does it all the time. It's crazy. It's crazy how accurate the system is when you know what you're doing. All right, so the symmetry dots were broken right here. The same way we had a long here, the same way we had a long here, there's our long. We now have a short opportunity here. Why? Because we close below a whole body of the candle close below the symmetry dots. But do we just get in right when we close below symmetry? You can't do it because symmetry can close below and go right back above. We need confirmation that we're going to roll over. So what I like to do is I like to do this. Close below symmetry. There's my rollover on my 9. It closes 90% candle close below my smaller MA on my 9 Simrenko, there's my close below symmetry, start watching your 3 Simrenko. You do not look at any 3 Simrenko trades until you close below your symmetry in direction of the 9. I would not take any 3 Simrenko trades. It's the smallest time frame we have on a Renko bar. What happens? We get below. I tell you guys look for an arrow. There's your arrow that posts. Here's your exact bar to get in when the arrow closes right there. Your exact bar to get in right there, look how it stops to the exact tick off my trend chart. Happens all the time like this. In fact, I got traders that are, are really good at this. Well, they use market delta with my 9 sim and pop in every trade they see that breaks symmetry that retests right, right to the tick and use negative or positive market delta. And Leo, that was your question yesterday. But you prefer the arrow that pops up because you know you're in a sweet spot right there. I know at that retracement to get in right there. So at the low of this bar is your live fill. Your live fill is now 69.2021. 69.2021, you just had another $500 trade that happened in less than six minutes. And these trades are not slow. These trades are fast because you're now breaking through an important inflection point. That's how those three charts work together. If you, if you cookie cut that exact trade the next couple of weeks, look at your results. And that's with the 9, 5, and 3 all working together. You're having three time frames that all coincide for the exact same trade setup. That's how we do it. Okay, so we look at the 9 for the trend, 5 to break symmetry, 3 to get in with the arrow on the retracement of the break.